Well, hey guys, welcome to our first session of Daily Bread. Uh, we're going to get into this, and the reason why we're calling it Daily Bread is because one, it's daily. Two, uh, the Bible calls really the Word of God our our bread. It says that we need to have it every day. I don't know about you, but eating every day essential. Reading the Word of God every day also essential. So let's get into the word. I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. And so as you go through it, we'll talk about it a little bit and um, it's going to be good. This is this is going to encourage you. Now I'm kicking it off here and it starts out with this big genealogy or the story of how Jesus got to earth. And you're wondering, why are we reading this? All these names, but it's important. I'll point out a couple things in here that are important to, to realize about this genealogy. So let's get into it here. Uh, Matthew 1, chapter 1, uh, verse 1 says this. This is a record of the ancestors of Jesus the Messiah, a descendant of David and of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron, and Hezron was the father of the L.A. Rams. I'm just kidding. Of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab, and Aminadab, you know that he could rap and he could dab. I'm just kidding. Um, Aminadab was the father of Nashon. It's French. And Nashon was the father of Salmon. I'm just playing. Uh, verse 5. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Now, notice this. It says the mother was Rahab. She was a prostitute. And so... It's so interesting that imperfect people get weaved in to the genealogy of Jesus. And we're the same. We're imperfect people who get to be brought into the family of God. So good. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother was Bathsheba, the widow of Uriah. Now, that's a story about David where he really messed up big time. He both committed adultery and murdered. And the woman he ended up taking as his wife eventually, Bathsheba, uh, that imperfect relationship is in the lineage of Jesus. So, so amazing, the love and the redemption of God. Verse 7, Solomon was the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam was the father of Abijah. Uh, Abijah was the father of Asa. Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat, who, little known fact, he was skinny. Okay, maybe, maybe you got that, maybe you did. Jehoshaphat was the father of Jehoram. Jehoram was the father of Uzziah. Uzziah was the father of Jotham. Joth, Jotham was the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Ammon. Ammon was the father of Josiah. And Josiah was the father of Jehoiachin. Okay, um, and his brothers, born at the time of the exile, to Babylon. After the Babylonian exile, Jehoiachin was the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel was the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, the father of Abiud. Abiud was the father of Eliakim. Come on, stay with me. Eliakim was the father of Azer. Azer, the father of Zadok. Zadok, the father of Achim. Achim, the father of Eliud. Eliud was the father of Eliezer. Eliezer was the father of Mathen. Mathen, the father of Jacob. Here we go, coming to the end. Uh, verse 16, Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Mary gave birth to Jesus, who is called the Messiah. All those listed above include 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the Babylonian exile, 14 from the Babylonian exile to the Messiah. Okay, now why did we read that? Again, it's important to know where Jesus came from. There's a lot more history in there of who those people were. And as you read the, whole, the Old Testament, you will see those characters, uh, those people in that story. But let's get into the birth of Jesus now. Verse 18, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. Okay, so now Mary finds herself, in, in other books it describes her encounter, but she's pregnant while she's engaged, she hasn't had sex yet to be married. Uh, she, she hasn't had sex yet um, before marriage. And so Joseph wants to like, wants to kind of play this off. He loves Mary. So he wants to sort of break off the engagement quietly, right? He, he would unfollow her and just quietly remove all of her pictures from his Instagram, you know, all that kind of stuff. But 
it says this in verse 20, as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So he's also affirming, hey, Mary was not sleeping around. Uh, this is something from God. Verse 21, and she will have a son and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet, saying this, verse 23, Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So uh, this is a fulfillment of prophecy from years and years before of people who said that a virgin would have a child. Early on in the Bible, there are things called prophecies where people said things would happen with no knowledge of them happening. Hundreds of years later, now Jesus actually does show up and fulfills the prophet who God spoke through the prophet to speak this into existence. Notice it's called, it says his name will be called Emmanuel, God with us. I want to encourage you that God wants to be with you. That God is not just a God who is up there somewhere off in the sky, you have a distant relationship with. No, but that he wants to truly be with you. He wants to be with you in everything that you do. He wants to be for you and on your side. And let's conclude this here in verse 24. It says, When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born and Joseph named him Jesus. So Joseph, he gets up, he... He takes her to be his wife. He doesn't have sex with her until they get married. He, he honors what God is doing with Jesus in Mary. And, and he, he does it right. Now, he had to risk, him and Mary had to both risk the public shame that would come with this. When Jesus is born and they were only married however months before, however many months before, people going, wait, when did you get married? And how old, how many months was he born at? And so on. You could imagine that they're taking on some pressure. But when you follow Jesus, guess what? Not everybody just signs up to high five your new relationship with Jesus. There may be some people who aren't for it. There may be some people who aren't for you following Jesus as fully as you are. But these these people, Joseph and Mary, the, the parents of the Lord God, fully God and fully man, they uh, walked it out. They walked out honoring God with their lives. And notice it says that he, he married her, that he did not have sex with her until they were married. And I really view this as this, that Joseph gave God his first. He gave God the first thing the firstborn of his own family, and he honored what God was doing in the earth in his wife and was saying, God, I'm going to honor this. I'm going to honor bringing Jesus into this world. Hello, how much pressure being the parent of the living God. <laughs> and he, he really took that season and said, okay, God, I'm giving you this first. But they had many more children after that. And I believe that God is this way, that when we give God the first, that he brings on more blessing into our lives so what how are you giving god first even today are you are you putting god first are you are you setting you know his his desires for your life in the first place or are are you just kind of throwing god a bone every now and then i want to encourage you to give god the first because when you give him the first everything else falls into place and that's that's our matthew chapter one word for you guys today we're so excited for you guys to be following jesus with us keep tuning in subscribe to the channel and uh, we love you guys.